all right how y'all doing welcome back to the channel and back to our setup training videos for the new build of the craftsman truck uh, in this video series we're basically starting on video number five or lesson five which is where we're going to go through and set the correct nose weight or forward ballast for our truck and the purpose of doing this is to make sure that we get the optimal weight balance between the front of the truck and the rear of the truck and that will affect our tire wear as well as our traction on the front end as well as in the back of the truck so what we got went ahead and went out and did is i've already gone out and run a 20 lap baseline using the nose weight that's currently in the truck from the baseline setup And I got to go through and record that information here real quick. Now, when you're dealing with nose weight, there's a couple of adjustments that <laughs> list in the garage here. Number one is going to be this ballast forward. And this ballast forward is how you adjust the weight balance in the truck. And really that negative six inch measurement there is not really all that important to keep, really keep in mind as far as what's going on. It's mainly for reference only because that will change based on other parameters in the truck. The reading you want to really focus on is going to make the biggest difference, particularly if you start trying to compare this with other vehicles or other builds, is going to be this nose weight percentage. That's the most important number that you're going to be dealing with because that's going to be the most it's going to be the constant of all the adjustments as far as forward ballast and nose weight goes or front rear weight balance. So don't worry about the negative six or on the uh, ballast forward or whatever that is. That's just basically reference only. Now on the trucks, we can go back the forward ballast. We can move back as far as negative 24 inches. That's the maximum back we can go. And for the furthest forward we can go with it. Wow, let's just go quite a bit of ways. Let's just go f maximum forward of 30 inches. We'll go ahead and cancel that, put it back how it was. And I've already gone ahead and uh, done my initial 20 lap run with this particular weight balance. And I'm going to go ahead and note that nose weight right now, which is right now 51.3%. So I'm going to pull my sheet over here. Put this as 51.3. And then I've already gone through and noted my rear tire wear, or my front tire and rear tire wear. And when we're working with our nose weight and forward ballast settings, for our tire wear readings, we're going to be focusing only on two of the four tires. We're going to be focusing on the wear of the left front tire and the right rear, left rear tire. Those are the two biggies because the difference in wear between the left front and the left rear is how you kind of gauge how your nose weight is set whether you've got it set close or or if it's way off and the goal here is to get the left front and the left rear tire wear as close together as as close as you can get them to each other as possible that's the that's the goal behind this particular adjustment so what we're going to go ahead and do and I'm going to give you a quick brief exp explanation on how nose weight affects the chassis. And basically the more the higher your nose weight percentage is that basically means that that's more weight over the front tires and less weight over the rear. And what makes that important is the weight over the tire determines how fast it wears, how much grip it has and that kind of thing. So if you have a high, a very high front nose weight, you've got a lot of weight on the front tires, which will cause them to heat up faster, get hot, even hotter than they would normally otherwise, and it can lead to the car being tight. Now conversely, if you move the nose weight the other direction and put more weight over the rear tires, it will be easier on the front tires as far as wear and uh, whatnot goes. But and it'll do the exact opposite for the rear. It will increase the heat on the rear tires, increase the wear on the rear tires, but it'll also increase the uh, reduce the amount of grip on the rear tires. So moving the nose weight back loosens the car up, 
moving it forward tightens the car up that's basically the the gist of nose weight and adjusting it will affect your overall tire wear it'll affect your overall balance and stability and it will affect your overall traction which ultimately leads to whether you get decent speed or not out of the truck and it can also affect your aero profile now as we adjust the nose weight it will affect our ride heights particularly in the front and rear depending on which direction we're moving with our nose weight our goal is to try to get this thing as balanced as possible and that's what the even tire wear on the left front and left rear is going to show us is whether we've got this thing balanced or not front to rear <coughs> And the biggest thing we're going to be focusing on with this is going to primarily be our lap times and the wear of those two tires, left front and left rear. So let's go ahead and start working on our adjustment. I've got my baseline already recorded for my tire wear and lap times. So what, and the, the way I like to adjust crossways is I, I like to move in 0.2% increments because this adjustment you got to be careful with because if you try to take too big of a bite it can make the truck get really really squirrely and make it unpredictable so don't take really huge jumps unless you know exactly what you're doing so what we're going to do is i'm going to move this back i'm going to actually take it from 51.3 and i'm going to take it right just to 51 percent and to do that we just move our f ballast forward we make that number smaller. And note our right height, 30 or 59 or 53, 98. Uh, didn't get it, damn it. 53, is our front nose or front right height. Take this back to, till we get it to 53%. So our 53, is our right, right height. So we're gonna drop this back to 51 even and it's already there. And we're 53.98 is what our right height was. And it looks like that's as close to it as we get. So we're going to go ahead and apply that real quick. And we'll go out and run it like we have in all the other videos. After you make an adjustment or a change, it's another 20 lap run. Before, and then we go ahead and record our data, our lap times, our tire wear, and, and the like. That way we get a gauge of how the change affects the truck. Also pay attention to the handling characteristics of the truck. Does it get loose? Does it get tight? What does the truck feel like it's doing? Because the feel is going to be a big part of this adjustment. making Because this will affect the feel of the truck. And the feel of the truck is going to be very important to your confidence and how hard you drive the thing. If you're not confident with it, you're not going to push it. And if you're not pushing it, you're not fast. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out right now and I'm going to start. Actually, I've got to reset iRacing so I get clean lap time number, or a, cl a clean lap time clock and zero laps on my scoreboard here. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. Put you guys on a brief pause and once I get done with my run and go, go get ready to start recording my numbers, we'll, we'll be back. See you in a few moments. Oh, just a quick note I forgot to mention. As you adjust your forward ballast, it will affect ride heights and everything else on the truck. So go through and verify that none of your adjustments on your setup have changed. Like for instance, I did have to change my camber because it dropped it down to 1.9 and I want it to be at 2.0. It also adjusted, or it also messed my caster up. So I had to re go back and reset my caster. It looks like it didn't mess with my toe in and my rear camber is still good both sides my truck arm preload i need to readjust that because now that is all wonky so let's take this up as again as close to zero as we can get without being negative so it looks like 3.3 now when we did video number four here the last video where we were working with the front arb and we had set preload into it and we recorded a preload, I think I had like negative 30 something preload in it at the end of that video. Now when I start working with my forward ballast, 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zero out. I'm going to note record that preload in my ARB under preload setting, so I've got that recorded. And to do this as we're doing the uh, front forward ballast, I want to set that preload to zero so it's not affecting anything or influencing anything as we're working with our preload and trying to balance our forward weight to rear weight. So basically I zeroed that out and then once we get to doing our arrow and our ride heights we will go ahead and do the final adjustments and get our preload set correctly then. Right now what we did at the end of video 4 was just kind of get an idea of where we need the preload to be when we get to that point. So we zero that out, make sure everything is balanced or the adjust, or the setup is where we want it, make sure nothing got knocked out of, out of whack on us. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to go out, I'm going to clear my telemetry folder because I am going to run telemetry at least for the first run here just to make sure that our ride heights didn't drop down low enough in the front end to cause the splitter to hit. Because this is one of the things that can happen when you start working with forward ballast is, as it affects the front ride height it could make the splitter hit the track without, unless we adjust for it so let's go ahead and clear out my telemetry folder I've got all of my ARCA stuff in there for, as I get ready for the uh, Richmond race coming up this next week in ARCA series which I think is going to be a mess because it's a short track and short tracks and I mix like oil and water so I'm going to go ahead and minimize Motex for, for the moment so it's out of the way. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to do a 20 lap run and we'll be back in just a moment. As soon as I hit the pause button on the video so it stops. Alright, we've got that test run completed. So let's go and record our numbers here. First thing we're going to do is grab our lap times which our fastest lap time for that run was a 56.489. Our last lap time of that run was a 58.267. And we'll go ahead and grab our tire wear. here real quick while we're in the neighborhood our left front is at 94 <clears> percent <throat> our left rear is at 97 <coughs> percent <coughs> so that little change we did where we went and where we're here we also got to make sure we record our actual nose weight that we are running which was uh, 51 so what I did between the first run and the second run is I dropped the nose weight 2% toward the rear so I had 51 point actually I had 51.3% nose weight when I started the first did the first run the second run was 51% even so I moved the forward weight back to the back of the truck by 0.3%. And that was enough to make a slight difference already visual, visually in tire wear. For the first run, our left front tire was at 96% left after we got back from the run. After the second run, it was at 94%. So the tire wear on the left front improved by 2% just by that 0.3% 0.3 weight change and our front tires or left rear tire or left rear tires rather saw no change at all which I'm actually surprised I was expecting to see at least a little bit of change on the rear, on the rear tire versus as well as well as the front tires just due to the weight balance being shifted now one thing to keep in mind with nose weight as you're moving nose weight back you're moving weight from the front to the rear which will which can affect grip if you get to extreme extreme amounts of nose weight going or weight going to the rear tires it can actually make the rear tires lose grip if you get too much that's why I'm going such that's why I suggested going in such small increments so that if you get to that point 
you can look at possibly correcting that with other things. Uh, the, and that basically is going to be the difference between between losing grip is generally going to be a loose condition where the tires are breaking traction and sliding versus an over rotation condition where the thing is just driving around the corner and i'll get into more detail that one detail about that when we get into track bars because loose and over rotation are two different things are caused by different they have different causes and they have different ways of being corrected and like i said i will go over that in more detail when we get to track bars and truck arms and conversely on the other side of the coin you also have under rotation versus pushing pushing is where the car actually breaks traction as it's trying to turn and the car slides up the wall slides up the track and into the wall versus just the car not wanting to ro to, to, to turn as much as it needs to the car's maintaining traction but it's just not turning enough that's under rotation which is different from tight uh, it could actually be called tight, but it's different from pushing. So pushing and tight are two different things. And one is actually known as under rotation. The other one is basically a push. And it has to do with whether the wheels or tires are breaking traction or whether they still have grip. And again, like I said, I'll go over that when we get more to um, more into working with uh, track bars. Because track bars are a big way of controlling how much grip the rear tires and front tires have. So as we move on, <coughs> we're going to make our next adjustment here. So we've gone from 51.3 down to 51%. Our goal is to try to get this thing as balanced as possible. And in theory, balanced should be 50% even nose weight. So what we're going to do is we're going to take note of our front right height, which right now is at 53.80. And we're going to drop this down from 51% down to 50.80 we'll go like 50.8 and drop our right height 53.80 that's as close as that's going to get I think and we've gone down to a 50.8% nose weight let's go ahead and note that quick in our log so we don't forget And we'll go out and we'll run another run and come back and we will continue the process of finding our optimal nose weight and i'll see you in about 20 laps all right we've got that run done so let's go ahead and record our data here this would be run number three i believe it was our fastest lap time is a 56.289. 289, that was a good Ford engine from back in the day. Our last lap was a 59.045. I had to reach over and make sure I had my microphone on so you guys can hear me. Because that's one of the biggest problems I've been having with making these videos is I'll take the mic my microphone off so I can just go out and do my run, drive my laps. Just because it's more comfortable for me to drive without the microphone on. And once I get done, I forget to put it back on. And then, of course, you guys won't be able to hear me very... You can hear me, but not real well. So i got to make sure I remember to put that guy back on. All right, we've got that recorded for our lap times. And so we're going to jump in, grab our tire wear. More garage tires. And our t left front tire is at 94%. <coughs> our left rear tire is at, I'm going to pull this guy out of the way so I can see, 97 <coughs> Now, one thing about when you're adjusting this forward ballast is it may, the tire wear is going to be slow to change. It will take some large adjustments to actually see a lot of changes on the tire wear. That's completely normal. It just depends on how much weight you're getting put back to the rear tires versus the front tires. So that's, if, if you do a, a run or something after making an adjustment and you don't see any change, that's that just means that the adjustment wasn't big enough to really affect the tire wear. 
and that's completely normal that's not a really big deal so let's go ahead and we're gonna make another adjustment to this thing our current 50.8 so we want to go down to like we'll take it down to a 50.5 and we're right height 53.84 384 and that's probably as close to 5384 as that right height's going to get now when you're adjusting these right heights so sometimes you might have to do a couple of clicks to get it to take just do a couple clicks at a time until you and hit apply and until you see the nose weight getting to the to where, where you want it to be and then that will basically cover that so let's go ahead and make sure we record our new cross weight or nose weight rather which is going to be 50.5 percent now when you start getting down around 50.5 percent that's probably where you'll start to notice your tire where it's starting to change more as we get closer to 50 percent because this is the lowest we can go on our cross weight is 50 i think it's 50.9 or 49.9 or something like that We'll, we'll actually probably get it down to that point but you don't want to just jump right to that point right at the beginning you want to work your way down to it so that you can get a feel for how the car is reacting to the change because if you do a major jump down from like what we started at 51.3 and just jump right down to 50 percent even it can make the car get uh, get loose and squ squirrely on you and by dropping the weight down like this gradually it gives you an opportunity to adapt to it and adjust to it so that when you go out and drive it in the race the first time you go to run the setup in a race you don't go out there and just loop the thing around and spin it out because that would just be embarrassing as hell but any rate now that we've got that all recorded i'm going to go ahead and reset double check my rest of my setup make sure nothing else changed and everybody seems to be okay. Our truck arm preload is a little high, so we'll drop that down. And it looks like that's good because it's not negative, but it's close to zero as it can get. And then we'll go ahead and reset iRacing. So I got zeroed out lap counter and zeroed out lap timing. And then I'm gonna go out and uh, run 20 more laps. Before I do that, though, uh, I've had some people ask me what, while I'm building these setups why I use MoTeC and not like Garage 61 or the VRS telemetry. And the biggest reason I do that, and I'll show you guys here, is because I race, or because a VRS and Garage 61 only will give you data that iRacing supplies. You can't create custom channels that are calculated using existing iRacing data like you can in MoTeC, where for example, I don't know if I've got a, if I do have a uh, thing here I can pull up and look and show you guys. Like for example, um, on the right heights here, on the arrow, this left front splitter, that is not a standard iRacing telemetry channel. iRacing doesn't give us that data. That is data that is being calculated based off of my center front right height and my left and front my left front right height and my right front right height so this is actually a calculated value using the the front right height data and the front front center splitter data and uh, what i mean by that is in in uh, motec you can go in and create custom telemetry channels based off of data that you that you can collect in iRacing and use that data make calculations to that data to create a new telemetry channel that iRacing doesn't natively provide. Another example would be my right, my left skirt and right skirts for my right heights on the back of the truck. That is also not an iRacing native telemetry channel. That's all, that, those are all calculated. So basically, in here in this my math section of MoTeC these are my custom channels that I have created based off of existing iRating data to generate channels that are not normally native from 
that are coming from iRacing. And as far as I know, you cannot do this with VRS telemetry or with Garage 61. Only thing you can see is just the native telemetry that iRacing provides. It doesn't provide for the custom stuff, so the splitter right height stuff, or the splitter height, especially the, the left side and the right side, as well as the um, balance roll center stuff, is generally not going to be available in Garage 61. And the side skirts ride heights as well. To find out if the side skirts are hitting the ground, that's something I don't think can be done in Garage 61 or in um, BRS. Because again, these are not native iRacing telemetry channels. These are all calculated values that are calculated using a formula that takes in existing iRating data calculates it and makes this new data for this channel. Now the accuracy of it can be kind of somewhat sketchy depending on the particular channels that you're trying to create. One channel I would love to figure out how to create but I have not learned how to do it yet is how to calculate actual downforce on the truck for the arrow. And that's one formula that has eluded me and one of these days I will figure it out and add the ability to measure the downforce on my truck or my Xfinity car or whatever car I'm testing but that'll be down the road because I still have to figure out how to do it but at any rate that's why I use MoTeC as opposed to Garage 61 or other telemetry or online telemetry programs is because of the flexibility I can get with MoTeC for non-standard telemetry data that being said, I'm going to put you guys on a brief pause, go back out, run my next 20 lap run, and then we'll grab out, gather our data and go from there. See you shortly. Alright, we're back from that, that, <coughs> that latest test run after making our last adjustment here. So let's get our stuff recorded. Fastest lap time was a 56.265. Last was a 58 by 48. And we'll go grab our tire wear here real quick. Get this thing will let me out of there. There we go. Might be wondering what might need to replace some of these switches because they're starting to get flaky as far as <coughs> whether they actually make one of the contacts are starting to get worn them because they were they weren't the most expensive switches in the world they're just cheap auto, or auto parts store shit so may have to be might have to look into replacing them at some point i know one button of mine on my rig here don't work at all anymore So one of these days when I get some time, I'm going to have to go to the part or go buy some more switch, either get some from Amazon or somewhere and hopefully get some better quality ones that live a little bit longer. All right, so let's see. Our left front tire wear is at 40 or 94%. Our left rear tire is at 97%. So right now we're seeing about a 4% difference just in what we've done so far. When we first started off, there was a 1% difference between the left rear and the left front. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to balance out our tire wear to get these two numbers preferably as close together as possible and as low as possible. But the good thing is, is we are starting to get weight off that, off that front, off that front end, which is going to help our front tire wear. Particularly, it will really help with the right front. So let's go ahead and go to our next adjustment here, which we're at 50 and a half right now. We'll drop it down to 50 even. Take note of our right height, which is 5379. This should take us down to even. 5379. Nose weight's at 
So we'll drop this 53. Make sure that's 53, 79. That's as close as we're going to get. We're within, we're within one thousandth of where we need to be. So let's go ahead and click done on that. And per the drill, we're just going to go out and run 20 more laps, get our numbers, and hopefully, and since we've gone, got the cross weight or the nose weight set as low as we possibly can now, we can't go any further with it. So once we get these numbers done, basically we will have all the data we need to determine what our best nose weight is going to be for this thing. So I'll go out and do a quick run and then we'll be right back. All right, we just completed our last 20 lap run here. So let's go ahead and grab our numbers. Let's run four there, let's run five. <clears throat> our fastest lap time looks to be a 56, 691. Our last lap of the run was a 58,769. <clears throat> Grab our wear numbers and see how much better we are able to get the tire wear on this thing. It's probably not going to be a significant improvement over where we started, but any little bit helps. So we're gonna come down here. Our left front wear is at 95. Our right or left rear wear is at 97. So basically where we started off with, we started off at 51.3% and our tire wear spread between the two was 1%. And as we went down the list here, our tire wear got a little bit better on the left front, stayed about the same on the left rear, which was kind of expected and not surprising at all. <clears throat> and by the time we got to the final run where we dropped it down to 50.5%, which is as low as we can get it to go, that's all the lower eye racing will let us go with it, we finally, we got our tire wear down within a 2% spread where we've seen a 1% improvement on our left front wear and no change on the left rear wear. So that's probably about as good as we're going to get that, at least with this particular adjustment. And our lap times, basically, we started out with 56.7 and by the time we got down to the bottom, we were at 56.6. So we gained a tenth of a, sec a second on the fastest lap and then our final lap of the run of the deal we went from a 58.0 to a 58.7 so it actually slowed us down a little bit on the on the long run but not too bad so basically this is kind of where we're going to let it sit for right now it looks like our best bet is going to be to keep it at that 50.5 percent or the lowest we can go with it because that looks to be about the most optimal uh, setting for based on tire wear and our lap times. So what we're going to do here is this will close out our nose weight video. So we'll go ahead and save this file. We'll go ahead and save our setup. And this is for tab 5 which is nose weight I want to make that capitalized I don't suppose it really matters but I'm just picky that way and we'll go ahead and save that guy and that will basically close out this particular part of the lesson so basically I'm going to go ahead and close out iRacing because we're done with iRacing for the moment. <clears throat> and our next video is going to be basically on crossweight. 
and how to get that set and optimized to get the car as balanced as possible and get our tire wear between the right front and the right rear as balanced as we can just like we did with the nose weight with the left rear and the left front so in that particular video I will also go into a little bit more depth about um, setting up for our the difference between loose over rotation and uh, tight and under rotation so I'll go kind of go into that a little bit more detail as well and I may even give you guys some uh, a training video extra I'll pull in some ARCA car footage so that I can ex so that I can actually show the difference between over rotation and and loose on exit and entry because they are two different things caused by different things and they have different thing ways to fix them and if you can actually see what I'm talking about as far as what the two different conditions look like it will make a world of difference in being able to try to figure out what to do to fix the problem when it goes in there and it doesn't want to turn where the shit coming into the corner and right now the ARCA car is really really good for demonstrating loose on, on entry particularly at the short track like uh, North Wilkesboro and stuff like that where you get on the brakes and the ass and slides around on you and it start it's initially the rear end slides out from under you and the whole car slides up the racetrack and you smack the wall off the front end anyway so that's actually kind of a condition of loose on entry and I'll actually try to show you that if I can remember but in the meantime if you like this video don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys all in the next one